Hey everybody, John here. Welcome back to my series, How to Use GMS. In this video, we're going to be talking about the filters, the envelopes, and the LFO section. So, without further ado, let's open up a default patch by clicking this user section here and loading up this default preset there. And we're left here just with a, sign, or a saw wave. So over here on the left is going to be your filter where it says filter. Yeah, makes sense. And then we have this cutoff knob, or the slider, so as we drag this down, it's going to start shaving off those top harmonics there. And we can see that on this uh, spectrum view right here. So let's do some kind of like right here, and then next we have our resonance. So when we drag this all the way up, the point of the cutoff will be boosted, so... Now let's take this down. As you can see here, where the cutoff is, it's a little bit brighter, as we can tell by the resonance, versus here, where it's not. So in case you didn't know, that's what it looks like. And then we have this keyboard tracking, which is kind of cool. So the keyboard tracking will basically keep the ratio of your note and the ratio of the how far the filter is away, and it'll keep that ratio going for every note that you press. So as you go higher up on your keyboard, the filter will also increase. And the lower you go, the filter will decrease. So let's put keyboard tracking on. Let's play a lower note here. And as we went all the way down, we can see how the higher harmonics came through. And then as we went lower notes, then they started getting cut off. And this slope here is basically that ratio that I was talking about, uh, this little curve right there. So let's take that off. Then you have three different types. You have the low pass, which is going to filter up the, the top end, so it lets the lows pass. Next, you got a band pass. This is basically going to pick the band that you want to pass, as the name implies. And then the high pass, this lets the highs pass. So all the way at the bottom is everything, and then as you bring this up, you start cutting everything off. And we can see that reflected here as well as that low gets cut off and cut off and cut off right there. Next up, we have the envelope. And also keep in mind, you have two of these. So this little bottom right here, there's a little slider. So you have two of those as well. So with this envelope, you can tell it to apply to different types of things. So with this filter, let's go back to a low pass. Let's have a kind of a little muffled there. And let's go over here to this envelope and let's say, OK, Let's have this affect the filter. And this amount, let's drag this up. This is the amount of how much we want that envelope to apply. So let's drag this all the way up. And this attack is basically saying, I'm going to wait for a little bit of time until I engage this envelope. The higher up we go, we're slowly fading into that envelope. And then this is the decay of the envelope, so hopefully that kind of makes sense so far. And we can invert the phase of the envelope with this right here. And the destination, we can also change where we would like to send this envelope to. So here, the FLT was filter. This is the mod, which is going to be this slider right here. If you want an envelope to adjust that, you would have this selected on the mod. And then the next one's going to be the frequency, so you can adjust the, the pitch. <laughs> And then we can also have a destination for an LFO if we'd like to. And then next up, let's dive into the LFO. So let's go back to a default here. And let's drag this cutoff down a little bit muffled. Now with this LFO, we have the rate. So this is basically going to be how fast this LFO is going to be moving or how fast it's going to be affecting your signal. And with a sync, you can have it sync to your beats or to your bars of your song. And this is going to be the strength or the amount of that LFO. 
that low frequency oscillation is happening. Something that we can't necessarily hear, but we can hear its influence or its effect on what we do here. So here is going to be selected by default on the filter. So let's drag this up to something like one, two, and let's bring this amount up here. Now this is full at the very top, so it's kind of exaggerated, but that's the, that's the effect that you're going to hear. And then you can change the rate, so the speed. So basically the higher up you go, the slower it's going to be, and then the lower you go. Then you can also, like I said, change the sync. Because if you find that you're on bar and it's, it's still not fast enough, then maybe you want to change it over to beat, and you're going to get a much faster response on that right there. So you can also send this LFO to the modulation. So again, the slider up here, the frequency or the pitch or the volume. And then over here, you can choose the different type of LFO that you have. So for example, let's go to frequency. Let's modulate the frequency of this. And let's maybe change this to a sign. So we have a regular sign. Let's say we want this LFO to change the frequency. So we can hear it kind of changing that pitch there. Here's pretty exaggerated. And then we can change the curve here. So this is kind of an on off. This is just a down slope here. And then you click invert here if you want it to go up. So yeah, and then you have this re-trigger here right there, and that re-triggers the LFO for each key pressed. And what's also really cool too is you also have a second LFO. If you click this little slider here, you have access to a whole another one. So you can have one modulating the frequency if you want, and then you can have one mod modulating the filter if you'd like, and just kind of experiment or explore the different types of changes that you want to do with that. One note that uh, I read in the manual, which I found was very interesting, is that the sine wave is actually bipolar, so it has a value of plus one and negative one in value, but every single other one is going to be unipolar, so values with zero and one and above. So something to kind of think about. Uh, I thought that was kind of cool that they added that into the manual. And if you haven't read the manual, I suggest you read it. It's actually very short. It's, not, it's a pleasant read, something to do. So this concludes this video here, and in the next video, we're going to be talking about all this up here, all of the effects that we can add to our signal to really spice things up. So again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.